Oh, my God. As you know, this is not the place that I'm the most comfortable. <laughs> nice being in a nice, quiet room um, on, on Clay Street. It really is an amazing opportunity to be able to talk to you. I'm the, I am the oldest TED speaker, by the way. So, you know. I've been at the Valentine for 18 years, and it's been a really interesting time to watch Richmond begin to transform itself. But to stay in a place 18 years, you also need to begin to think about transforming yourself. And I think the question that, that has really driven me over the last few years is that we really, you don't believe that you were told everything. Don't believe that you were told everything about your family, about your community, about your job. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a more personal story. I'm in the process of moving my mother into assisted living. You'll all get there. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> and having that really horrible conversation, uh, and we're doing all the moving, and suddenly she says, Bill, you know, there's something I never told you. She's 90, I'm 60. What the heck is she not going to tell me? <laughs> oh, by the way, you had a brother. So in that moment, in that moment, the untold story begins to change everything. And I think for our businesses and for our communities, unless you know more, unless you push to find more about your past, you're going to miss that opportunity. In fact, I'd actually be as so bold as to say there's one thing that you don't know about your past that's going to transform, that will transform every piece of who you'll become. There's one thing you don't know, and the only way we get there is to push it, to push into our past and find that one thing that makes the difference. And for Richmond, I think part of the creativity that we see in this room today and that's in Richmond today is that we are pushing back against the story. It's not just about the Civil War. Even that's what everyone thinks we're about. It's about revolution. It's about revolutionary ideas. It's about innovation in business. It's about racism. It's about inequality. But it's when you begin to think about those things and confront them, suddenly it all seems to make sense. The Valentine's an odd place. It's been there for over 100 years, 1.6 million objects in our collection. We've always had this little touch of innovation that's there from some of the first school programs. In fact, 1902, the first kids, we go free for every child in Richmond. And so for 50 years, it's one of the few places, the only museum in town, really, that black and white kids could attend. And so it's, part of an, it's some part of our DNA that we, can, we need to do this. But we, I discovered and sort of thought about, good Lord, you know, what are we going to do in the future? Richmond's changing, and what happens when over half the community that you serve wasn't born here? Suddenly, there's no genetic connection to our place. The history that you see in that place may not be yours, and how do we make that place relevant to all the new people that are coming to Richmond? And that's been our challenge. And so thinking about that new role, we're not, we can't be about exhibits and stuff and lectures, the same the things that we've always been about. It's about creating this new sense of place. And it's about the ideas. It's about that intellectual property that's part of what we own at the Valentine. And we've been working with a lot of, so how do you reinvent yourself? Well, part of it is you've got to come see the 1812 Wickham House. During the last several months, uh, we've done s commissioned site-specific art installations by VCU grad students, an amazing group. Uh, new art in an ancient house. We take walking tours into neighborhoods where people have never been. We rethink the meaning of all those objects by saying we can, we actually are arrogant enough to think that we can tell the history of our city in 50 objects. And some of those we'll share today. It's also about new trend, other trends in our community like tattoos. And so as an institution, we knew that we needed to push, to find the untold stories and find, and, and in pushing, find 
really our place as an institution. The Tattoo Project, which everyone wants to see, really. Oh my God, there he is. <laughs> Come out here. Hello, sir. Get off your phone. Steve. Show it. Show it. happen. He's just not the tattoo guy. He put all this together. So, Stephen. So, we're not about the Civil War. We're the, the great river city. We're the third most tattooed city in America. And so, for our institution, we need to make sure that that was chronicled. And so, last year, using, is Terry Brown here by any chance? an amazing photographer in this community who worked with us for six months to document tattoos and the tattoo artists that are creating these remarkable things for our city. But I'll tell you what happened. In the middle of all this, and I was supposed to really talk about tattoos, but in the middle of all this, I realized that in fact what we were doing is that in the tattoos that we were connecting in ways that we probably didn't realize to our past. And the things that were important that we needed to begin to think about as a community. The power of women and the history of women in this community. From this dress worn in 1863 by a woman in town. And think about Richmond during this period. I know we talk, Ed talked a little bit this morning. Think about a community where there are more hospital beds than there are beds for residents. And who, gets, who is in charge of that mourning process? It's the women of our community. Imagine that moment when you exercise the right to vote for the first time. Imagine that first job, taking your husband's place, driving a bus during World War II and losing that job when the husband returns. OK, imagine being the first woman to wear a pantsuit to work in Richmond. It's about our relationship to the river and how it's changed over the years. This is an amazing image, but the thing that's important about it is that little caption at the bottom that says Richmond, where men and women are sold like cattle in the market. It's about the relationship to the river as a place of industry. It's a place that we now rediscover as a place to enjoy and celebrate. It's about a relationship to race and to our Confederate past, which expresses itself in interesting ways. Is it Patrick Henry's Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death? Or is it Gabriel? in 1800, leading one of the first slave revolts and really changing that liberty or death to death or liberty. It's about objects like this one that remind us from our 50 exhibition, a flogger from a slave jail. It's about noble women. Mott, where are you? Okay. Just making sure. Um, amazing, amazing women that kept the home going for families. But standing in contrast to that are the Confederate monuments that run through our city. Standing in deep contrast, this is a celebration of the dedication of the Jefferson Davis Monument. Or space age versions of the Confederacy. This is, in fact, a photograph of the Centennial Civil War Center. There's a great image that we have of this where you walk into the door and there's actually the entrance is, some, uh, is a space suit with the space suit, with the gun space suit with a Confederate flag in his hand. It's, I guess it's Confederates in space. <laughs> Willow Lawn. We find it in the tattoos. 
we find it around us. One of the things we don't talk about enough, I think, is about the importance of faith and the amazing, amazing faith that we have expressed in the places that we gather. Bon Air, around the table, at the altar, but it's in our tattoos. It's about the places that we've preserved and the places that we've restored. This is Main Street Station, great, great tattoo. Uh, but it's a place that's been changed over the years. This is the oldest known photograph of Richmond, and it's really looking through where Main Street Station is today. But it's what else was there? It's the places that have been destroyed, the places that have been forgotten. This is the most remarkable photograph for me because it's, it's a seven-story trash heap. And sitting on top of that trash heap is the, the White House of the Confederacy. This was after the Civil War. And that trash heap is where 95, but is also where the burial ground uh, in Lumpkin's jail, the center of the slave trade. It's about who are our heroes. Lincoln, a forgotten figure in Richmond until very recently. Or is it Maggie Walker? Or Doug Wilder? Who are our heroes? Who are the heroes? How do we promote ourselves? How do we talk about this city to the world? Is it being the place that the first television station in the South was open? Is it that continuing effort uh, to draw tourists to our city? Come visit our shrines. But I'd say that probably it's really ultimately about our values. What do we value as a community? Or is it those, is it those founding principles of Jefferson? Probably. How are they expressed today in ways in this community? How do we actually put all these pieces together to make Richmond? I think that each of us have the opportunity, really, really the responsibility, to tap into the power of the untold stories, to push, to find the truth. Every city has an opportunity to mine its past. Every business and every organization in this room can learn from looking at that past for all, each of us, that there's something in our past, there's a story in our past that can transform us. It's the untold story of a mother. It's this first city, it could be finding that forgotten neighborhood or an unloved building or an undiscovered hero. And there are hints of that for all of us. There are hints around us. It's in our bodies, it's on our tattoos, it's everything about us. And so why is Richmond this new place for creativity? I think it's because we're finally acknowledging that there's this amazing and productive tension between what you know and what you think you know about your past. It's challenging every notion about what we think, about what we've been told. It's the tension with our personal stories. It's tension with the images and realities of our community's history. And quite that's the tension. That's the tension where real creativity occurs. Thanks so much. <laughs>